Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... I don't know if you know this. Thor News is for winners. And that's why you're here. So stick around. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. You're right, sir. Hit the button, baby. Party dance time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are celebrating the return of my good microphone by talking about the sun stripping the atmosphere off of Mars and leaving it a desolate orange shell and a reminder that war is very bad. Now, where science is saying that the sun has stripped off the atmosphere, I still believe in my heart that humans and non-humans lived on that planet. They had a great world war. They popped the atmosphere and everybody died. And now... Nothing lives there, asterisk, unless a lot of shit lives there. But these days, you just can't tell and just don't know, you know? All right, so let's get to the article. We're at Universe Today. This article by Ken Kramer on November 5th. NASA's Maven orbiter discovers solar wind stripped away Mars's atmosphere, causing a radical transformation. Now, the first thing that pops into my head is that, like, ain't it kind of weird that NASA and science are telling us that the sun strip Mars's atmosphere off of it, but the sun doesn't affect the climate, and that carbon is the culprit, and the villain 100% on Earth. That's just kind of weird, especially, you know, I've been documenting the sun for a while, and it seems pretty powerful, and seems to have an effect on our weather, and if you add up weather, that leads to climate. All right, it's like I forgot how to make videos or something. Bear with me. NASA's Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution Orbiter Mission I can't keep talking like that. That would be annoying, huh? They're just talking staccato. Has determined that ancient Mars suffered drastic climate change and lost its thick atmosphere and surface bodies of potentially life-giving liquid water. And surface bodies of potentially life-giving liquid water because it lost tremendous quantities of gas to space via stripping by the solar wind. Hear that, moms and dads? You need to keep your planet off the pole because once the stripping begins, there's no turning back. Based on new findings that were announced today, November 5th, at a NASA media briefing and in a series of scientific publications. Well, hey, guess what? Venus has an atmosphere. Maybe we should go back to that, or we've never been. Maybe we should send some stuff there, since we got like 500 things on Mars. Why don't we send some stuff to Venus, you know? Seems to have way more mystery, because it's got, you know, full atmosphere, and, and she's the goddess of love, and she's volatile volcanoes and shit, and I bet there's water there, too. Okay. The process of Mars' dramatic transformation from a more Earth-like world to its barren state today started about 4.2 billion years ago, as the shielding effect of the global magnetic field was lost as the planet's internal dynamo cooled. Bruce Tchaikovsky, Maven Principal Investigator at the Laboratory for Atmospheric and Space Physics at the University of Colorado Boulder, told Universe Today. So are scientists in Colorado legally allowed to smoke pot? I wonder about that. It's like NASA drug test them, like, we know what you're thinking about outer space and planet formation stuff. We, we don't want you to be high while doing that. You, know, you need to do your serious science seriously. Or you might come up with some wrong conclusions or something. <sighs> Whatever. The radical transformation of ancient Mars from a warm world with significant bodies of standing water that could have supported life to its current state as a cold, arid, and desert-like world that's rather inhospitable to life was caused by the loss of most of the planet's atmosphere as powerful streams of solar wind particles crashed into it and stripped away due to the loss of protective magnetic field as the planet's core cooled. And I often wonder, like, by stripping our planet of one quadrillion square feet of oil in between the core and the crust, does that screw up the magnetic field of Earth at all? I would guess yes. I'm just a YouTuber, man. I'm not a big oil scientist. Did you know oil companies have employed hundreds of thousands of scientists over the last hundreds of years. Science doesn't mention that much in that push for climate change. There was like, damn you big oil companies. And it's like, hey guys, you know, they couldn't have fracked all this stuff and they couldn't have removed all this oil and they couldn't have come up with a million different types of gasoline and plasticated everything without scientists. Like scientists really worked hand in hand with the oil companies for a hundred years. And now they're jumping on the other side because that's where the money's at. You know what I'm saying? It just seems really, it seems really, uh, capitalism to me. Shouldn't free capitalism for profit and for the people. We think that the early magnetic field that Mars had would have protected the planet from direct impact by the solar wind and would have kept it from stripping gas off. Jukowski told me. You know, it's weird. Is I don't think I've ever used the phrase gas off before. Maybe I have. When I smelled something funny, it's like, hey, you'll make sure the gas is off or go turn the gas off. All right. And I feel dumb. 
so it would have been the turnoff of the magnetic field that would have allowed the turn on of stripping the atmosphere by the solar wind. The evidence suggests that the magnetic field disappeared about 4.2 billion years ago. Whatever, man. I don't really need you to date everything. I appreciate it, though. And that makes it sound like that, like, Mars just popped out, filled with water. Like there was no planetary process that led to the water creation, like the core cooling off, getting trapped in the atmosphere, as steam falling back to Mars' water. You know, like I imagine it happened on Earth. That seems way more logical than the dumb, like, comets and asteroids brought water to Earth. It's like, what? You know, it's like, man, you guys ain't smoking pot. It's like you're smoking government cheese. And not only is government cheese bad for you, it kills brain cells. And... And it makes your integrity quotient drop severely. The period of abundant surface water actively carving the Martian geology lasted until about 3.7 billion years ago. The loss of the atmosphere by stripping of the solar wind took place from about 4.2 to 3.7 billion years ago. Yeah, like, you gotta throw that math in there, but that really has nothing to do with anything. Didn't I just mention that? Like, who gives a crap? You know, like, <sighs> whatever. Do you ever get the feeling that they date shit as like a distraction? You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, yeah. Its mass is 62 kilograms, and she's 3.65 billion years old. And we can prove it. You know what I want? I want a home carbon dater. I want my own little carbon dating machine, handheld, so I can go around carbon dating everything. The first thing I would do is carbon date your face. Oh, I think I'm, I think I'm losing it. Billions of years ago, Mars was a very different world. Liquid water flowed in long rivers that emptied into lakes and shallow seas. A thick atmosphere blanketed the planet and kept it warm. Screenshot, or didn't happen. With the release of today's results, the Maven science team has accomplished the primary goal of the mission, which was to determine how and why Mars lost its early thick atmosphere and water over the past 4 billion years. The atmosphere is composed of mostly carbon dioxide. Since water is a prerequisite for life as we know it, determining its fate and longevity on Mars is crucial for determining the habitability of the red planet and its potential for supporting Martian microbes, past of present, if they ever existed. Yeah, I don't get a boner from microbes, man. Martian women, on the other hand, maybe I would if I didn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> Whatever. The NASA Mars Exploration Program has been focused on finding water, said Michael Meyer, lead scientist for the Mars Exploration Program at NASA headquarters. Water is the prime ingredient needed for life. Well, I would say sunlight. You know, if you don't have sunlight, it'd be hard to be alive. And love, you can't live without love. It is a major factor in the climate and for shaping geology. Oh, that's why they don't mention the sun, because... And it is a critical resource for future human exploration. California would agree. NASA's goal is to send humans, underlined, on a journey to Mars, underlined, during the 2030s. Well, I would guess that since it's 2015 and there's no prime directive and that Congress seems to be habitually stripping NASA of stuff each day, make, hitting that mark becomes harder and harder. This NASA video shows a visualization of the solar wind striking Mars. Gosh, dang it. Can I please get one of the solar wind striking Earth? I'll go find it myself. Maven arrived in orbit at Mars just over one year ago on September 21st, 2014. The $671 million Maven spacecraft's goal is to study Mars's tenuous upper atmosphere in detail for the very first time by any spacecraft and to explore the mechanisms of how the planet lost its atmosphere and the life-giving water over billions of years as well as determine the rate of atmospheric loss. I would like to take this moment to point out the fact that we haven't really got a whole lot of raw data from Maven. I mean, this thing takes photographs, pictures, video, I imagine, because video is just multiple photographs stacked together. And so, like, they've given us, like, one or two, three, four photos from Maven, and that's it. So in over a year and a month, we've gotten, like, four photographs, which is actually really great for NASA, you know? The new Maven data have enabled researchers to measure the rate of Mars' atmospheric loss of gas to space via the action of solar wind stripping, as well as the erosional effects of solar storms. Based on measurements from Maven's suite, of nine state-of-the-art scientific instruments, the solar wind stripping away gas at a rate of about 100 grams every second today in the form of carbon dioxide and oxygen, said David Brain, Maven co-investigator at LASP. Wow. I guess, I guess if you got a last name like Brain, then you're expected to be a scientist. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't be a gangster. I guess you could, because gangsters have to be smart, too. And in a way, NASA's like gangsters, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I won't go too, too deep into that. Most of the stripping of the Martian atmosphere by the solar wind at Mars was thought to have taken place very early in the history of the solar system when the sun was much more active and when the solar wind was more intense. So today, the rate of loss at Mars is low. Yeah, I got a question. How long did it take the sun to spin out all the planets and get them into the place? I mean, you're saying about 500 million years? 
I've never heard anybody put a number on that. They always talk about the accretion disk theory. Like, it just, boom, it happens instantly. Like the Big Bang. <sighs> Holy crap. How long is this stupid-ass article? All right, this is going to have to be part one. There's no way I'm doing a 30-minute video on their pontifications on Mars and shit, you know? Uh... All right, so maybe I'll do a part two on this. You know, what is the solar wind, and how does it strip away the atmosphere? And why doesn't it do that to Earth? Because our magnetic field is strong. Asterisk. All right, so yeah, maybe I'll get back to this, and we'll do part two. This one's not really that funny, and I'm in the mood for a bunny. Anyway, yay, my uh, microphone's back. All right, peace out. And the sun sure changed Mars's climate, eh? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, know what I mean, know what I mean? High five. Peace out, go.